The theory of evolution by natural selection predicts that it's 100% that we don't see reality as it is. Now, my attitude about it, that theory is it's the best theory that science has so far. Right. But my attitude about it also is that it's not the final word, that yeah. it's the glory of science to progress and that we will get new theories. But right now we have no, no deeper theory. So as a scientist, it's my responsibility to say our best science right now, namely evolution by natural selection, says very, very clearly the probability is 100% that we don't see reality as it is. And my emotions, of course, can disagree, and <laughs> they may, but my <laughs> mind, that, that's my, my intellectual. Now, of course, I'm thinking about going for, for deeper theories, and we'll see what those deeper theories say. Yeah. But, but as a scientist, right now, this is the... The deep, now, I should make point out an objection that I've gotten. Okay, so two, two objections. W one is, how can I use the theory of evolution to prove that we don't see reality as it is without contradicting myself? Yes, I so saw this. This is actually, the favorite yeah. of philosophers. Yeah. Right. So philosopher, and 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 by the way, this is you know, this is not a minor thing. They're, they're publishing papers and journals and there's a PhD thesis on this and so forth from philosophers. So, so philosophers are, are quite into showing that, that I'm just basically so wrong that I'm, I'm refuting myself uh, by self-contradiction. And the argument is basically that, you know, Darwin's theory starts off with talking about organisms in space and time yeah. and resources in space and time. And so, so look, if I'm using evolutionary game theory, to, to prove what I'm claiming. Either it's true that evolutionary game theory faithfully models what Darwin was talking about, in which case it couldn't possibly say that we don't see animals and resources as objective reality, because that's what Darwin assumes. Or it, it doesn't faithfully, the, the mathematics doesn't faithfully model Darwin, in which case I, I, my results with that mathematics are irrelevant to evolution. So in any case, I'm wrong, right? So that's, that's, that's the argument. And what it misses is the central theme of science. And that is that scientific theories always start with assumptions. Like in the case of Darwin, um, physical objects in space and time, pursuing physical resources like, like plants and other animals for food and so forth. Every scientific theory though has its limits. It, it, and this is just a, a consequence of something called Gödel's incompleteness. It's Gödel's incompleteness theorem. Anytime you have a, a, a theory with a certain set of assumptions, you may be able to prove a, an infinite number of things, but there's a bigger infinity of things outside that are true that you can't you can't reach with your theory. That's just the way science works. So the only question. So it's no question that every scientific theory will have its limits. The, the only question is this, is the scientific theory precise enough to give you clues about its own limits? And that's the glory of evolution by natural selection. It is, of course, got limits, and the mathematical statement of the theory can tell you precisely what those limits are. The same thing is true in physics, right? So in, in physics, we have Einstein's theory of relativity and quantum field theory, and these assume that space and time are fundamental. But that again is a, an assumption, and it will have its limits. The only question is, will those scientific theories in physics tell us the limits of that assumption of space and time? And again, to their credit, they do. They will tell you that Yes, our theories start with space and time. That's the assumption of our theory. And of course, our assumption has limits. And in fact, it's false at 10 to the minus 33 centimeters and 10 to the minus 43 seconds. Our assumption is no longer viable. And yeah. that's, so, th so we don't go and say, oh, the physicists are caught in a self-contradiction, those stupid idiots. They, 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 they start off with space and time as their fundamental assumption, and then they use their own mathematics to prove that space and time are not fundamental. Those guys are caught in a self-contradiction. We don't say that. No, we say, brilliant. 
they are so precise in their theories that they can tell you the limits of the theories, and that gives us clues to the next step we have to take as scientists. And that's what I'm doing with evolution. It, we, we find the limits of the concepts that we started with, and that then gives us a hint about the creative leaps we're going to have to take to get our next theory. And that next theory, one constraint on the next theory is you have to get your previous theory as a special case. So whatever new theory we get that beyond space and time, for example, in physics, it has to project back down to space and time physics and give us the physics that we know they're inside space and time. Otherwise, the deeper uh, theory is wrong. So, right. so it's not like we just chuck our old theories. They're yeah. incredible tools. And, right. and they give us hints about what's beyond, but they can't tell us what's beyond. We have to take a creative leap, but the creative leap is then constrained by the constraint is you better get back your original theory yeah. as a special case. And so okay. when we go beyond evolution by natural selection, whatever new theory we come up with better give us evolution by natural selection or a generalization of it as, as the projection from the deeper theory. Okay. So, so that's my, my response to, to the philosophers who, who are saying that you're caught in a self-contradiction. No, 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 no. This is the way science pulls itself up by its bootstraps. Okay. One theory to the next. So whenever there's a new theory, it has to account for all the theories that have gone before. It has to build on them, essentially. That's right. And, and, and it has to keep the strong points of those theories and maybe point out to the weaknesses that were in those earlier theories, right, where they were wrong. 